So I was a reactor during the session on the use of PET CT as a um, modality or an imaging for um, early stage malignancies, particularly for breast, colon, lung, and prostate cancer. As a reaction to the presentation of Dr. Santiago and the CWP statement that, um, it sh that PET CT should not be a routine imaging for early stage malignancies, um, I just emphasize that the, this modality should not be done routinely. Um, and if ever we decide to um, to order or request for this imaging, it should be probably done um, or ordered judiciously. Um, and that uh, we emphasize the role of the MDT or the multidisciplinary team in um, deciding for the next step, for example, in this uh, point of uh, patient care, um, whether this modality that we would ask for would be the more appropriate one and what it means for the patient in terms of um, treatment and eventually in terms of survival and, of course, quality of life. Well, during the session, Dr. Santiago um, discussed the, um, the importance or the value of, of, of the imaging, the information that it can provide the clinician but also he provided that other perspective of ordering it um, based on the clinical scenario. So um, it was emphasized during the session that um, we are not treating images. We have to go back to the clinical setting and um, treat the patient as it um, presents to us. Um, I think that's one very important highlight of that um, discussion. And then I think it was also emphasized about the cost of that um, imaging. It's not cheap. And um, whether or not it's the patient who will pay for it, um, somebody has to pay for that additional test. And um, I think that the question of it being cost effective as far as um, the bigger picture of things like Will it mean better survival? Will it mean um, better quality of life uh, was also surfaced? So I think those are the more important points. And I think one more thing, uh, the involvement of the MDT as well as um, um, involving the patient with the MDT in terms of deciding whether this might be appropriate or this might be something that they'd want to consider even and how does it tra translate to their goal or preferences um, those are, I think, the more important points um, um, discussed. We've been hoping, maybe when I was still a trainee 10, 15 years ago, that it's been the dream to have this screening program that is um, initiated by the government for common cancers um, based on prevalence, probably. And for the Philippines, it's really breast, colorectal, liver, lung, and probably cervix for the females. But um, our programs for screening are still really wanting. Uh, I hope the government would be able to prioritize these initiatives because uh, we can't just keep on treating. I think a better way to make a dent in terms of survival for all these malignancies is really preventing it in the first place. It's hard to push for preventive strategies if it, it will come from several groups. I think a more concert, concerted effort from the private groups like the societies, for example, plus the push from the government would probably make a boost in terms of catching these patients on an early stage or even preventing them preventing them in the first place. For example, for colon cancer, if you do screening in terms of colonoscopy and you find these polyps, we can actually take them out and altogether decrease the chance of that polyp becoming cancer five years, ten years down the line. So uh, there's a lot of things that we need to do, but I think um, very important is really to push for screening and other preventive strategies um, to improve that survival that we want to happen for our cancer patients. I think aside from doing screening, I think public education is very important. So um, there are a lot of platforms that we can uh, do public education on. Uh, we have a lot of experts 
And I think we can harness their knowledge, experience, and probably their effective communication skills so that we can translate that skill to uh, valuable information for the patient to take in and probably consider in terms of their health-seeking behavior. And Well, in the ideal world, um, there is um, there are screening programs um, supported by the government or pushed by the government. People are educated as far as what they can do to maintain healthy lives. Um, they don't have to go to specialists to be able to get quality care. Hopefully, with the UHC, we can make um, the environment as far as health care is concerned better. People can just go to any doctor and they can get the best quality education and care that is due them. Uh, they don't have to have money to get quality care. I think that's it.